The Pathless Path, Part 1, The Vedantic Path. Vedantic path, the first step of the journey is to make this investigation into our essential nature of being aware. So we turn away initially from objective experience. also known as the path of discrimination. In the Vedantic path, we start by seeing that we cannot be anything that we are aware of. We cannot be an object of experience. Through the Vedantic path, we arrive at the understanding I am nothing, not a thing, not a body, not a mind, not any kind of an object. The initial method used in the Vedantic path is self-inquiry. Once we've understood that we are the witnessing presence of consciousness, or awareness if you like, we need to spend some time abiding knowingly as that in order to discover the nature of that awareness. So the first step in this consideration is the discovery that we are this aware presence and to see that it is this presence that knows or witnesses the mind, body, and world. The second step is to be that knowingly instead of imagining that we are something else such as a body or a mind
we do not become this witnessing presence as a result of this exploration. Rather, we notice that we are always only that, and now we abide as that knowingly. Previously, we took ourselves to be a body and a mind, and all the experience was conditioned by and appeared in accordance with this belief. Now, we reclaim what was always ours. We stand knowingly as the witnessing presence that we always are but which is nevertheless sometimes veiled, forgotten, or simply overlooked. Self-inquiry really means self-abiding or self-resting. And this process is initiated by using and asking questions. What is it that knows or is aware of my experience? thoughts come from? What is the nature of knowing with which all knowledge and experience are known? Am I aware? Who am I? What am I? Self-inquiry. Self-inquiry starts from stillness, from being aware of being aware. We set aside all our beliefs and conceptions of the world, and we look at our experience from pure openness and unknowingness, as if we were a newborn infant. We then ask a question and allow the question to remain in awareness without further thought or logical analysis around the subject. The best times for engaging in self-inquiry are when we are lying in bed just before going to sleep at night or immediately on waking up in the morning. More so, it can be worthwhile returning to our inquiry following a period of silent meditation.
so, as a first step towards a deeper and truer understanding of our experience, the teaching points out that it is not I, the body, mind, that knows, feels, or perceives the object, other, or world. but rather it is I, awareness that knows the mind, body, and world. This is the first step we take. I am not the mind body and world. I am that which knows the mind, body and world. This is the classic neti neti approach. And then we pause here for a while and investigate the nature of this I, the knower of the mind, body and world. By turning our attention away from the objects of the mind, body and the world towards this knowing. the second stage in the spiritual process and then there's the third stage now having discovered the nature of I the knower we go back to the objects of the mind body and world and we reconsider them from our new understanding And it is the stage that these yoga meditations are primarily involved with. So step one, neti neti process. I am not my frustration. I am not my incessant thinking. I am not my judgments. When there is this presence of a triggering based upon the mind in thoughts or the body in sensation or the world in perceptions, I am not my thoughts sensations in the body or my perceptions. Step two, the self-inquiry process. What then am I, if not an object? And as we said before, self-inquiry really means self-abiding or self-resting and is often initiated by asking questions such as, what is it that knows or is aware of my experience? Where do thoughts come from? What is the nature of the knowing with which all knowledge and experience are known? Am I a 
aware. Who and what am I? Step three. Now that I know who and what I am, I rediscover the nature of self relative to experiencing life, which is perceived as separate objects prior to step one. And now we see things from a non-duality perspective. So step three is really about collapsing the perceived separateness. Self-inquiry is mainly relevant to the first two stages, culminating in what is known as enlightenment, awakening, or enlightened duality. In the third stage, self-inquiry becomes or is replaced by self-abiding and yoga meditations. The answer or the results to this genuine self-inquiry comes in feeling a kind of sense or intuitive understanding that arises in silence. If objections arise in the mind, don't dismiss them or suppress them. First, welcome them. Because they are a sign that your self-inquiry is working. Then, investigate them but based only on your direct, raw experience, not on concepts learned in childhood, and above all, not on any spiritual belief. Once we have come to an initial understanding of what we are, we can use the question, what is it that is aware of my experience? To help us take us back there. Although of course it's not a place. We no longer need to formulate an answer to the question. We just rest in the place where the answer is to be found. All that is needed at this stage is to discover that there is no absolute proof of our limitedness. This removes the remaining barrier to the realization of our true nature. Understanding can then unfold in its own time in this state of openness and unknowing. We can encourage this unfolding in two ways. First, by abiding knowingly as pure consciousness for as much of the time as we can. And second, by choosing to live our lives on the assumption that we are universal consciousness not separate from anything or anyone else in the universe.
Let's get comfortable. If you can, an upright position. Crossing your legs or sitting on a chair. that you are taking in this moment. Bringing your awareness into the presence and body. Notice your breath. As it moves in and out through the nose. And as you notice your breath, you notice that when you notice your breath, slows down. Feeling and becoming aware of the subtleness of the body expanding on the inhalation breath through the nose. Noticing the subtle deflation on the exhalation through the nose throughout the body. And as you sit here and notice and become more and more aware of your presence, ask yourself. What is it that is aware of my experience? Simply release the question into the stillness and the silence that you feel. And just continue being the witness Staying with the movement of the breath in and out through the nose. Maintaining awareness of the body expanding and deflating on the in and out breath. that your thoughts are pulling you away 
Once you become aware of the thought, release it and just come back to your breath. And now sit with the following question. Where do thoughts come from? Staying with the alignment in the spine. The back of the skull is reaching upward as you sink into your sitting bones. And as you have settled with the first two questions now, what is the nature of the knowing with which all knowledge and experience are known? And in the space of silence and contemplation, maybe you become aware that this knowing I. Presence of consciousness. Bathing in this awareness of where you know the nature of this knowing. Now ask yourself the question Who? And what am I? And as we anchor deeply in this knowing in this witnessing presence of consciousness. And as you notice and get anchored in this awareness, recognizing that I might feel the sensations in my body, I might have the thoughts in my mind, but I am not those thoughts. I am not those sensations. I am this continuous presence of awareness. It's always been. in which the experience is being held. 